Hey, Suga. It's your girl, Risa, coming to you guys um, with a video. It is, y'all, I'm a little Tina Turnish and I'm a little Jelly Roll, but that's all right. It's kind of like a update video of what's going on with Corey. I've made updates of what's going on with him now, but some of you are new to my channel and don't quite know what's going on. Um, you may know that he um, had cancer and um, that kind of thing, but I thought I would come because I had some comments about, um, you know, some questions about him. So I thought I would just come and um, do this quick Q&A video. So, uh, of course, Corey is now four years old. Um, when he was born, he wasn't handicapped or disabled or anything like that. But, he developed food allergies. So, it took us until he was about two and a half years old to really find out everything that he was allergic to. So, as of right now, he is allergic to all dairy products, tree nuts, peanuts, um, and eggs. Um, he has a slight allergy to wheat, but it just makes him sneeze a little bit. It's not deadly. Um, and I think now he has an allergy to red dye or red food coloring. So, with that being said, we can't feed him a lot of food. Because a lot of things do have eggs and dairy products in it. Um, some things he will eat and it may make him sneeze and make his eyes water, his nose run. Um, so we have, I've got a big bag of medicine that I have to give him on a daily basis. Um, when Corey was smaller and of course being on a bottle, when he got to be a certain age, we couldn't take it from him. We would take it and just only give him a cup and he would just cry, cry, cry. And I mean, nonstop crying. And it got to where, um, even though I was you know, still pumping milk and not physically nursing him, it got to the point where he started to lose weight and we couldn't understand why because we were trying to feed him more instead of giving him a bottle all the time. So, we battled with that for years. And until last August of 2013, August the 11th, I took him to the emergency room because he started to complain about his stomach hurting. I thought he was constipated because he's always had problems with constipation because of the different formulas and all the allergies and things that he cannot eat. Uh, they did an x-ray and they didn't see any constipation. Well, I noticed that there was a knot on his side and it was sticking out just like my little jelly roll is. It was sticking out like that. And so, um, they did a CAT scan and the CAT scan showed that Corey had a mass. A mass in his abdomen that was attached to his kidney. It covered from here all the way around to the back of his um, left side. Um, so they admitted him into the hospital. They did a biopsy and they ran tests and found out that it was cancer. It's called Wilms tumor. It's a cancer or growth of the kidney. And they're not sure when he when it developed. Sometimes it can be there from birth. Um, Corey had no signs or symptoms of actually having this. Now, he has had constipation, and that is one of the signs. He's never had the blood in the urine and, and all of this other kind of stuff that they said are signs and symptoms. So, they started chemotherapy the next week after he got out of the hospital. He got out. Um, he went in that Sunday night. They admitted him about four o'clock in the morning which made that Monday morning and he went home that Thursday the next Thursday is when we went to get the test results and they started the chemo he did 13 weeks of chemotherapy now doing taking chemo um, there are a lot of risk when you do chemo so there's possible nerves nerve damage heart damage all sorts of stuff, y'all. It's just a long list of stuff. Um, there were a lot of things that we could and we could not do 
we could not let him play outside in the dirt we couldn't have any plants we couldn't have any animals he couldn't go certain places we had to vacuum the house five and six times a day change our ac filters more than usual it couldn't be every 30 days we had to change it like once every two weeks um clean but certain certain things it was just a real turnaround for life but i don't regret any of it um in the meantime once we found out i'm recording the video once we found out that um i know Jalen was crying it was look it was so sad but um when we found out from the doctors how big his tumor was and where it was positioned it hit me y'all I began to cry I was so upset because that is why my baby couldn't eat food because the tumor was literally laying on top of his stomach it's not like um, it, it, it's not like um, it was dense and very heavy it had him to where he would lean back you know you know how people with large stomachs how they their back has been in he was just like that and that thing laid on top of his stomach for god knows how long he was three years old and he could have possibly had it just that long but the doctor told me that it took about six weeks for it to get to the point to where i could notice it and that's exactly how long it had been since I had taken him to the doctor because um, he woke up crying like he was constipated. And so I took him and I told him I thought he was constipated. They gave me medicine to give him, was giving him the medicine, and he was okay. Didn't have anything else to think about. But that hurt me so to know that that is why we couldn't take him off the bottle. That is why he cried so far because that was his only way of getting nutrients in. That was his only way his source of food was through soy milk. He's a, he's allergic to different kind of juices like grape juice, apple juice, um and um you know a lot of other juices. So it was it's not like he was how you know little kids can sit down and eat a plate of food that wasn't him. Corey would eat like sausage for breakfast or you could give him a little bit of grits. He didn't always like grits, but the older he got, he started to eat a little bit and he would only eat about a spoonful. And that's because that mass was laying on top of his stomach. So once they removed it, um, we're thinking, okay, he's going to be able to, you know, get his eating habits up, this, that, and the other. But right now what we're battling is the fact that he did have chemo and radiation. And those things can um, damage your taste buds. It also can um, live in your system for a while and make you nauseous and make you not want to have an appetite. And that's where he is. And until they can find something to actually give him an appetite, this is where we are with certain times of day. Like he'll ask for certain things to eat. He likes dry cereal or um, he likes popcorn. He likes Salisbury steak. He likes grits. Um, he likes spaghetti and meatballs. And he likes noodles. That's it. That is it. So after he's eating that, you know, he gets hungry. And so we give him soy milk for nutrients because you can't keep feeding him meat all day long. Um... He doesn't like vegetables. Those are the things that before he started his chemo, Corey would eat greens. Um, he would eat broccoli. And that's it. Now, we got him to eat greens one time. Now, we can't get him to eat it ever since that last time, um, last month when I cooked greens. Now, he won't eat it. And it's like every time he goes to the doctor or we have to give him some type of medicine, you can see it in his face. He wants to eat, but it, it makes him nauseous. He gets nauseous and he gets a bad taste in his mouth because he'll, he'll do like that, you know. So it's frustrating because I want my son to be normal and eat food, but I also want him to be healthy and happy. So, um, like right now, um, he's not eating. 
And so within the next few months, the doctor told me to give it when they, the last time I went, they told me give him about another three months. So it's been a month since I went to see the doctor. He told me that. So he said within another, well, two months, we'll see what his eating habits are. And, um, he doesn't suck the bottle all day, but it's like certain times a day. Um, he burn off his food and he's back hungry and you can show him what he what's in there to eat and it's like mm -mm. and even if you're cooking sometimes the smell of food makes him sick so that's where we are with Corey um I have a folder here and this is just one of many <clears throat> folders that I got from the hospital that I have to keep all my information in um, as where um, these are this is his medicine slip this is the first sheet of medicine down here at the bottom that he has to take <laughs> and this is the other one right here and um, we no swim they give us instructions on the different things he can and cannot do um, so they told me like now I should somewhat treat him like a normal child, a healthy child. But with him waking up in the middle of the night with a blazing fever, that's <laughs> that's not normal. I know children do it, but and then when you take him to the doctor, they can't find out what's wrong with him. So um they told me it's a virus and I know children get viruses, but I still have to be cautious with him in different places um, that I take him and things that we do. Like they give us cheat sheets right here um, about his temperature. If he gets a temperature of 101, it's an emergency with children that's having, you know, um, chemo and things like that or have any temperature of 101 is an emergency. And you see it right there. Any the temperature of 101 is an emergency. And must be seen by a doctor as soon as possible. So, and then this one is talking about fevers, um, the blisters in the mouth that they get from chemo, and the platelets, and the, all this kind of stuff. Flu, and be careful with this. And he has an antibiotic that he has to take for six months after his treatment. And the, the medicine... You know, sometimes antibiotics can irritate your stomach. And with Corey, it does. It literally gives him the runs. And this is his chemo treatment. This was a list of all of the days and what medicines that they were going to give him on what particular day. So this is the first sheet. And this is the second sheet. And so this is what we went by for 13 weeks. And it told us what days he would get what particular medicine. Um, one is doctinomyth doctinomycin and one is doxorubicin and the other one is vincristine vincristine causes constipation really bad doxorubicin um is the one that can cause nerve damage um and heart damage and the same with doctinomycin so they all have serious side effects now when we went to see the doctor all of these are doctor's appointments and things of how to care for him and all that that I still have to pay attention to because it has signs and symptoms on them that I have to pay attention to now when they did his surgery I asked the doctor would she take pictures and for those of you that have not seen the videos of his treatments and him going to the doctor um this now these are graphic I'm telling you these are graphic and I need to put a dis disclaimer at the beginning of the video but this is just to give you guys an update on what we had to deal with now this first picture is when they made the incision 
and they went in they're pushing the bowel to the side to pull which they're pushing it to the right of his body so that they can get the tumor off of the left and that is this picture that is the tumor right there can you see how big that thing is now these are his intestines okay that's that picture and this is the picture of the doctor taking it out yeah can you see how big that is mm-hmm and this is the actual tumor why they are they have taken it completely out and you will see right here is what's left of his kidney that's the kidney and all the rest of this is the tumor and they haven't cut it all the way out yet it's like laying on top of his stomach so that is what we had to deal with and yes he has been through a lot and he still continued to smile and continued to be play he tried to play and be normal as much as he could but that is where we are so whenever you see him um us talking about going to the doctor and things like that if i have to take him to the doctor it's because it's something to be concerned about um i don't know how long he's gonna be on the bottle um and i know it it has started to mess with his teeth um not only uh well i take that back you know, I had somebody to make me feel real. I started to feel bad because he had been on the bottle. But when I took him to see the doctor, he, he had um, his hematologist, his oncologist, his nutritionist, the whole gamut of doctors that he had. And they sat down and they talked to us. And the reason his teeth, you might see little spots on his teeth. And, of course, people automatically think it's because he suck a bottle. He don't suck a bottle like that. He sucks it till he drinks his juice and or his milk and he's done. But what they told me was, and I asked them about it, and they said it's not from his bottle. It's because he was anemic, and we didn't know it. The tumor had drained him because it was like living tissue so his blood supply it was taking his blood supply and it made him anemic being anemic it does things to your body and it made his teeth brittle um not only was he anemic he had high blood pressure and i didn't know it so Corey had um when they put him in the hospital they were giving him blood pressure medicine and um, extra iron and all of these things to get his system right. <sighs> to have your child live in your house and you take care of them and you bathe them and you don't know these things are wrong. I didn't know he had, you know, people can die from high blood pressure. You know, people can die from being anemic if you don't know it, you let it get too bad. But glory be to God, thank you, Jesus. He kept him. God was not through with him yet. And I began to feel so bad. But then I said, you know what? If that helped save my son's life by him sucking a bottle, I don't care. I don't care. You know what I mean? It just, whatever I can do to help him to get it, from one moment to the next in life it's a blessing y'all it's a blessing I got a bed here full of things I was sitting looking over a lot of stuff his medical records and um, when we went to give kids the world which is give kids the world the village and the different places that we went to and we went to sea world and we went to walt disney and universal studios and all these other places 
it was a blessing, but the blessing of having my son here alive and still able-bodied and he's done with chemo, he is cancer-free, is the biggest blessing. Oh, wow, the biggest blessing ever. I was looking at some of the pictures that they gave us at Universal Studios. And I thought about it. It all started with me and my husband. It all started with us being teenagers with high school sweethearts. The two of us been together for almost 30 years. And all of our children, all six of them, some of the things that we go through in life, I am truly grateful. And my little angel is here today by God's grace and mercy. And I truly thank him. I thank him every moment. Not only Corey, but Jalen. The one right here in the stroller. She's a blessing. All of them are blessings. But she was a premium. She was born two pounds, one ounce. So I know the goodness of God. I know how he does things. And nothing is traditional. We all have, you know, our ideas of how things should go in life. But one thing for certain, too, for sure, our life is not ours. And it's going to cut me off, y'all.